Okay, this is the first fitting to this presentation, which is kind of like one on one of the one on twelve though, and uh, it's about Pasha Gabriel. Yeah. Now, these these things are recorded, so try to avoid mentioning client names with their full name. Try to use acronyms or just one letter maybe at most. Okay, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, three more. Okay, uh, so this is a question and answers. Uh, it's not a presentation. It's me talking to all of you at the same time, and you interrupt me at any point and say, what about this, what about that? And you're never going to say you're asking too many questions. Okay, so who knows what FRA is? Ooh, oh, someone who is not shy. Julian. Julian. Yeah, somebody who read the invitation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> someone who read the invitation. <laughs> no, don't move that. Ah, okay. Okay, it's recording. <laughs> ah, <they're cool. laughs> Okay, so flash recovery area is like a, a repository for backups. Uh, it's um, essentially the same as an Armand catalog thing, except it's... Um, it's not in the catalog, it's inside the control file. Okay, um, come, come this way. You guys are late, you know, next time I'll just go over the door. Okay, so what happens? When you run your database, you define a directory such as slash backup. Okay? And then you say, I want this for this database to be up to 50 gigs. Okay, size equals this, location equals flash back. Okay, and that's how you say in the database to define flash recovery. Then what the database will do automatically is go into that directory and then add its name here. Okay, and this database will only use this location, not else. And then inside it's going to create slash archive log for archive logs. We're going to create slash backup set for backup sets. Slash online log for online logs and etc. When? As it needs to create the file. Every time it needs. So you delete it, it'll recreate it. You delete it, it'll recreate it. You don't do anything with it. You don't. If you did. If you did, yes. Okay. But you're not supposed to go manually touch that directory at all. This directory is totally managed by Oracle and you don't do anything with it. Okay. Now, for example, for archive logs, it'll create a directory here with a date. So it'll be like 2006, um, 12, 12, 1, and then it'll put the files here. And the files will have, you know, cryptic names and etc. but you don't really care. Okay. What's good about this? All this is inside the database in the repository, okay? And you know how what's the size, you know what's the oldest file, you know which one's in it, which one's not, and etc. Okay, and it's going to put files here until it reaches that size, until all the files in that one directory reaches that size, 50 gigs. At this point, it's going to, well, not 50 gigs, but it's going to try to reach 80%, okay? Once it reaches 80%, it's going to stop looking for files that can be deleted. Was it 85%? Crystal. Yes. Archive log, you have to envision archive log dust one. No, this is just a directory that it creates here, okay? This just goes like that. Yeah, but yeah, does it actually put your archive logs in there in addition to? Or I was explaining in a second. Okay. So once it reaches that size, it will start looking for files that can be removed. If it cannot find any, it will start putting error, well, warnings inside your log file to get your attention. Okay. So obviously, if you just set it up, nothing will happen. Okay. What you need to do is you need to define where your archive logs are going. Okay. So move that to. So your best one. Archive log desk one. I'm just going to write desk one because I'm lazy. You set it to, now this is weird, location equals like that. Okay, here we go. Use underscore 
BB. Underscore recovery. Underscore death. Okay. If you set it to this, then your archive logs will go here. Or whatever, wherever you define this location to be. And if you move this location, they will move with it. Okay. If you say that location equals and you give it that directory, they will still still go in that directory, but they will not be part of the flash recovery area repository. You will still have to manually manage your files. Okay. Only when you use this, your archive logs become auto managed. Okay? So once you have this in place and you do nothing else, what happens? Your database runs, runs, runs. Logs get archived, archived, archived. You fill up your destination. Then you say, but it's cool. I cannot put any more files there. And your database stops. OK, so you need to set up something else in addition. It's really a, sometimes, for some places, it's a new concept. It's called a backup. <laughs> <laughs> you need to set up your backup. OK, so you set up your backup to go there. And uh, how you do that? By doing nothing, basically. You just say to our man backup. Okay? So. So in our man, okay, we do backup. database. Now, assuming you haven't done any other changes to your database. So once you create a backup, then you can delete some of your archive if you want. Because they're no longer needed because you have a backup. OK, so to give you an example. It doesn't delete it automatically? Delete what? For the backup? The archive what? No, because you said you want it to be 50 gigs. So that, you know, those files become eligible for deletion. Yeah, I'll show you with a timeline. OK. Imagine here you set up that array. <coughs> OK? Yeah. You set it up here for the first time, and then you start sequence 1, 2, 3, etc., etc. That's good. OK? These are our catalogs. At this point, you say, oh, gee, I need a backup. OK. Imagine that here you've reached 40 gigs. OK? And imagine your database is only uh, five gigs in size. That's your database size, just to be to make things easier. Okay? And then you start you do a backup database. And then here you create a backup. Okay. And then the next one is 51. So obviously you need archive log 50 for recovery. But all the other ones here, you don't need but it's not going to remove them yet, OK? Because target is 50 gigs. So it's going to create 51, 52, and et cetera, imagine 60, at which point this becomes 50 gigabyte in size, OK? And then the next time you need space, it's going to remove that one. So it's like a sliding window of 50 gigs. Did everyone get this? Good. Yeah. Could you do me a favor and just give me like a high-level overview of when this feature was first released and what business problem it's trying to solve? It was first released, I can't remember, 10.1 or 10.2? Yeah, 10.1.2, yeah. So it's first released in 10, and the business reason, it's, uh, the business uh, case it's trying to solve is um, cleaning up your uh, backups and having your backups to be self-managed, your disk-based backups. So basically, no longer having to worry about running out of space for backups to disk and... Yeah. Or, or having to manually go remove backups and remove an incorrect backup, and etc. Okay. Or um, um, if, you, if you have the space, but basically using this feature, you can say, I want to use 100 gigs for backups. And then you let Oracle manage the backups. And you may have backups for three weeks back, or you may have backups for one week back, depending on how active your database is. And is this the directory you would suggest taking to tape on a nightly basis? Is that? Uh, yes, that's one way of doing it. But actually, in Arman, you can say backup flash recovery area. 
it's like a disk cache of your of your backups. Okay. Yeah, I should have started with that. Okay. Anyways, keep going. So, does any, everyone get this concept of flying win over 50 gigabytes and only removing uh, unnecessary files on the back? Okay. So imagine it keeps going and, and it reaches another point. So when is it going to remove this backup? Okay, this is where your RMI configuration becomes into play. So the setup of flash recovery here is a bit spread out. You have a little bit in the init file and you have a little bit in the RMI configure commands. So okay. <coughs> In Arman, when you do show all, when you do <coughs> show all, it's going to list you all the configured Arman parameters. And it lists them in a way, in an easy to set way. So it says configure um, retention, was it? Excuse me. Policy to redundancy one semicolon. Basically, this means as long as I have one backup, that's all I care. So that one backup on the timeline, we have a backup here, we do logs here and logs here. Okay, so this backup will not be eligible for removal until you have another one. The moment you have another one, this becomes eligible to be removed. And as your window slides over, your 50 gigabyte side, uh, window, as it slides over, it will remove it. So if you don't have one, if you don't have a second one done, what, what does it do? Let's say it it'll just up all the logs up to the backup. Up to the backup. And hang, right? And hang, yes. So essentially, what you do is, Every week on Sunday, 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 you schedule a backup. Every Sunday you schedule a backup, and you've sized appropriately your archive, uh, your recovery area destination, and it'll keep as many backups as possible back. So if you may have like three weeks, you may have. 10 weeks, depending on how much cap blocks you have in between. And that's how, how it works. A note, if you manually delete an old archive from the disk, it's not aware of it until you go in and do, I think it's either a cross-check or delete obsolete. Yeah, you do a cross-check. You do a cross-check copy. So it's not checking actual space, it's checking its calculation of yes. what's available, because yes. that hit us once, yeah. in that there was lots of space on disk, but it didn't think there was space in disk because it was keeping track of it and it wasn't checking what was available. Yeah, yeah. So you need, you, you never need to go, you should not go and delete files manually. If you need to delete files, you go through RMAN and delete them, and that updates the repository inside the database. So when you have flash recovery error, you don't just delete stuff from the investigation. Now, if your disk is full, imagine you have three databases, you have 100 gigs of disk, and you said each of them to be 50, well, eventually it's going to fill up, and you need to remove some stuff. How to address this? You reduce your size to 35 gigabytes, and then you switch a log file. And when you switch a log file, then Oracle will say, ooh, I'm using 15 more gigabytes than I should. Let's remove what I can from the back. So if you want to reduce the overall size of the flash recovery area, you need to um, change its size and switch a lock file. That's yeah. dynamic? Hmm? Is it dynamic? Yes, dynamic. it's absolutely dynamic. It's like a target. You just change it, switch a lock file. The only reason you switch a lock file is to make it act now, and it'll clean up. You, you don't go and clean up manually. So how do you get it from there to tape? OK. If you have Arman, uh, we have tape software that works with Arman, you just use that. And there is commands such as backup flash recovery area, which sends it to uh, tape, and puts it in the repository. 
If you don't have that, you can just take incremental backups of your flash recovery area to grab new files. You really have to work in sync with your, uh, if you don't have the RMAN uh, interface with, for your tape software, you have to work in sync with your tape. But on top of backup flash recovery area, there's also backup backup set. Yes, Command if you want to back up a specific set, but that's like, I would consider this a maintenance command, not a regular thing to schedule. Okay, I'll give you a full example of how to back up this. Question? Yeah, how do we know the backup on every Sunday is safe in order not to have, you know, the window frame past the backup in, in one week, actually? What do you mean, say, like, completed successfully? Yeah, what if, no, what if the, the, the frame passes the backup in less than seven days? Is that possible? No, it'll like, stall. It'll he said stall. he said it'll stall before it'll it deletes stall. an old backup. If, if this this here is bigger than 50 gigabytes of changes, mm -hmm. then it'll stall. It'll it just, it'll just say you don't have enough space. And then? And then you go and either increase your size. Is it dynamic? Yes. Is that possible? It's absolutely dynamic. So if you fill up your window, you need to, your size was not So does it stall the way it stalls when archive log gets, gets full, like the yes. database has? Yes. Okay. Is it the same error message? Yes. If it is a yeah. Even if you're not using location equals use DB recovery? No, if you're no. using this, and this is your mandatory location, it'll stall. If you're not using this, then you're not using flash recovery. <coughs> and then your log files will never get deleted. Okay. If you look in GDAR, uh, archive log. Yep. Archive log. There is a column that says is db file test file. I'm, I'm not sure if it was if it was available here, but it's also in dor backup file. Okay. Now. One of the biggest benefits of flash recovery area is you can put it inside ASM. So Say that again. Sorry. The biggest benefit is? You can put it inside ASM. Inside ASM. Yeah. So you can have all your bikes to be in ASM, so no one can actually go and delete them. Or no SA that doesn't know about deleting files from ASM. So I should, um, if you said your location or uh, that's not the actual parameter, I just use location. The actual parameter is not cryptic. But if you say location equals, and then you do plus this group name. This group. And then it'll send it all inside ASM. And this means that that respects all the ASM redundancy rules and whatnot. Yeah. Well, based on your disk group. Yeah. And your templates and etc. <coughs> okay. Um, let's see. Crystal, is, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead or not, so just tell me if I am. Is this all related to the flashback database, flashback table, all those? No, <laughs> this is completely. Oracle used flashback for four distinct features. Yeah. Okay. They used flashback for flashback query, which is reading data as of a point of past in a, in a time by using the raw <laughs> data. It uses flashback for continuously incremental backups. So every time you write to a block, it'll take it and put it into a flashback log, so then it can take it back and apply it back. It's like a reverse archive video log. They call this <coughs> flashback tool, they call this flash recovery area, and they also call a fourth thing called uh, flashback drop, which is when you drop a table, it puts it in a it basically renames it with a funky name and puts so it somewhere This else. is unrelated to that. This is, it's four distinct things, all called flashback. That's the only thing that combines them. So you don't need this to set a flashback, flashback database. That's what I was, I guess that's what the real question yeah. And you don't need to have flashback database to set up this. Okay, let me give you a full example that'll clear out some things that may be going through your mind. Okay, so we set the location, we set the size, and then every Saturday at 1 a.m. we do backup database. 
from a actually sorry. We do backup. Every Saturday. Command or level the, the syntax is. Okay. Then every day, other day, at 1 a.m., we do backup. Our backup policy. Now, inside Norman, we set the default backup to be compressed and to be, um, then we set the redundancy to two, and, and we set backup optimization, so optimization to on. Um, and all the backup of the control file to on. Okay, these are the settings we use. So what happens? On Saturday, we do a backup, post archive log. Notice that we don't have the lead input. Okay? So it backs them up, compresses them, and it leaves the originals there. So you have compressed and uncompressed logs at the same time. Okay. Then every day we do the same backup, incremental one, database plus our catalog. So every day it'll compress some more, leave the originals, and then incremental. Okay. Now Oracle knows that there is an incremental and there is a compressed one. So it knows to remove the non-compressed one first and then the other one. So that way if you have a disaster situation, your archive read logs are available there on the spot, but when the space is needed, it will, they will be automatically removed. So it like leaves a, a, a good buffer. So you don't need to worry, oh, should I set this this big or this big? It's, it's automatically, you just set a, set a size and that's it. Questions? Um, have you implemented this in production for any of the customers on your team yet? Yes, yeah. on all three. On all three? No, two. And how is it working? Any gotchas or surprises? There was one bug. Tell us about it. There was a bug. The bug was um, basically the repository got corrupted, and you just re execute an event and it recalibrates the repository. That's it. And it's fixed in 1003. But it's very rare the first time I see it, and it happened only once. So this works perfectly because. You, you set up the size, and you know it will be always fitting in that size. And if it needs more, it will just fit in more, and you know you, you lose how far back you can go in time. But you don't compromise your you know database activity. Really cool. Now, yeah, go ahead. You don't use a catalog I'm taking. You use no. I have control for auto backup. <coughs> so every time there's a change, it will be backed up. Now, let me ask you this. How big is a control file in a database? Give me a size. Anyone else? Yeah, I was going to say smaller. Or such as CI or 50 megs. It depends you know on the number of records you keep in there. There you go. It depends on the number of records you keep in there. Exactly. And because <coughs> you don't use flash recovery area, you, the records stay inside the catalog, and you just keep adding, 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 adding. If you look in DDR catalogs, you see a, like a gazillion of, yeah. And that's why it's 50 minutes. When you implement this, 
it's one night. Because the, the entries get cleaned up and they are deleted and ready to be reused. So your column up, your control file becomes small because you're maintaining your column up. So that's a side benefit of this. If you put this in ASM, you have hard times finding out what's in the back. Imagine it's full and you don't know which one it is, and you, know, you have really hard time to find out why is it not full, why is it um, not deleting files, how many backups I have, how big is my backup, etc. Cetera, et cetera. I have this nice little, well, it's not little, it's a big query that I can just give you and you execute it, and it gives you a little table with the backups when it goes backed up, is it obsolete, and then you can just look at it and you can determine right away whether you have a backup. How big is it? When is the last time of the schedule? Um, does it have enough space to clean up if it needs more space? Now, you, you, you can find out your, your, the views to manage all this uh, yourself. You can just look in the reference guide or look in the guide list of um, the administrator guide. There's a good reference there. But one of the important views is called only available in 10.1, in 10 it's not there. It's called VDOR flash recovery, flash recovery area usage. VDOR flash recovery area usage. You know, four words. And it gives you for each type of backups how much how much percent it is using and how much are reclaimable. Okay. Here's a little trick gotcha that you should know. When you have archive block sequence 5, which is a copy, which means the actual file, when you have sequence 5 inside a backup set, okay, <coughs> and both of these will not be obsolete. They're not obsolete. Even though you have two, None of them is obsolete because they're still needed for your recovery. However, slash recovery area considers this file as safe to be removed. And the only way you can see this is if you look in that view. Do we have daily modules written for that? Yes, we have daily modules for this, for this. Excellent. I have the scripts ready. The scripts are well, they have a little, a few more things here and there, but the scripts are this big. They fit in half a screen, the back of scripts. And there is no need of cleanup scripts, it's all automatic. You just set the script, set your schedule, set your size, apply the dailies, say, set the warning thresholds for the dailies, and that's it. Fully automatic. And the daily check is one query, the backup is one command, <laughs> One command that is about this big. Cool. Very cool. You remind me again how you get it to be uh, copied or moved over to uh, tape? Yeah. Um, oh, good. Like it's got to be done in our With this right? schedule, with this schedule, they don't have any online ready tool to back up. So what we did is every Sunday, the tape here on Sunday, there's a full backup of the flash recovery area. Full, everything. It may have two weeks worth of backups. Doesn't matter. We just take it full. And every day, we do an incremental. That's that's OS level backups? Yes, OS level backups based on... So our man doesn't know that... Our man doesn't know that it's there. The only thing to be careful is that this has finished before you start this, and this has finished before you start this. So do you have strict setting flags or other semaphores for that? No. Roll your own. Yeah. There is a nice feature in, in Arma called duration. So you can add here, like, say, duration. And then you can say up to eight hours. And then you can say, if it's not ready in eight hours, error up. Hmm. However, this and this don't work together. <laughs> so it's feature not implemented. So you, we could have used duration, but it doesn't work with this. Does duration work even if you're waiting on tape? 
as opposed to going to daily. But duration, you say, this command is allowed to run for X amount of time. Yeah, but if you want to do a backup, like at one of our clients would go straight to tape, if we added the duration command. Time to tape. Okay. Okay, I have three people asking questions. You haven't asked a question. <coughs> you get to ask a question. I was just actually wondering, uh, setting that up a uh, standby type scenario, is there any extra things you need to look Good. At? Thanks for reminding me of this. Okay. <laughs> you will love this. In the standby, <coughs> you set everything the same. You set uh, archive log destination, use DB recovery file list, and then you set up your FRA in your standby. Okay. Then all your log files from production will go on your standby. And then you set up I'm not going to write it. He said, configure archive log deletion policy to apply on standby. Say that again. Configure archive log deletion policy to standby. To apply on standby. Applied on standby. That's a status. OK. So guess what this is doing? It waits that it's applied on the other side before applying it for deletion. Exactly, before flagging it for deletion. It doesn't even delete it. It flags it for deletion, and when you're, you need space in your flash recovery area, then it'll delete it. So what we do, we set it like flash recovery area for, to 16 gigs, and we set up this configure deletion policy. Is, That's it, it. is it able to play with data card? Of course. It works well with data card then? Well, why shouldn't it? I haven't tried it. We've had a couple of boards with data card now, so. I know good, we had, we good had, question. Okay, you ask, you ask, you ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Yanni, question. Um, Come on. A comment? But your query is really nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. should, you should send it to all of us. And yeah, put it in the uh, put in kit. Yeah. Send it over to No, it's, uh, it's on request, you know, like references on request. <laughs> We had a standby and charge for something. Alan. Um, I'm thinking that if we will uh, just delay to this backup from this, when it will recover, is it just say not there? Yes, it's going to look for it. And it's going to say, I'm looking for this and it's not there. What do we do? Okay. So imagine your timeline. Okay, this is a little shaky timeline, but imagine this is a timeline. Imagine you have a backup here, and you have a backup here. Okay. And you deleted this one. And you have no. Back up here. And you deleted this one. Only the backup. You still have your archive grid logs. And you say restore please. Okay. And it'll say, I can't find this backup. And you're like, oh I cannot find this backup. Someone deleted it, we're dead. No. You need to do cross-check copy, cross-check backup. Then it'll know this one's not there, but it'll say, hey, I can use this one. Okay, I'll use this one, and it'll go here. Okay, so if you lose your, your flash recovery area, and the whole thing, it's gone, and you need to restore something. Okay, do you have any... Uh, we, have, we, we've, we have customers who do that. They have like a separate disk in the same machine as a production box, the same... And they can lose the whole box. So let's say they lose the box. Okay, do you have the copy of the flash recovery area on tape? Well, I guess so. If I did it manually, right? Or if I have a, if you have a separate <laughs> script that copies it. Yeah. If you have a separate but our script. But man doesn't know about it. Right. What do you do? You restore it. And then you say catalog recovery area. Okay. And it will go and rescan the recovery area. And then you know what backups you have. Cool. So if you need to imagine that your policy is, so you have a backup here, and your policy is up to here, just happens to be up to here, but you want to restore at this point of time, okay? But this is already gone, but you have it on tape, so you just restore it. Well, you change your size for so it doesn't delete it right away. So you change your size a little bit higher. You restore it to the same location, then you do a catalog recovery area, it'll add it to the repository, <coughs> and then you can restore your point in time. This is where the other flashback database can ever be useful, isn't it? No, no, the other, the other flashback is different. I'll do one other one for you. Can 
the vet ask her seventh question now? Yes. <laughs> oh, but you can ask her seventh question. <laughs> Actually, Greg. What, what if you wanted to go back to like a three week old backup? Okay. You keep two days on disk and like you're not going to set your size to like a terabyte. No. See, okay. Okay. Good. Just because it's all controlled by the database at this point, so I'm just wondering. Remember, it's size, not time, right? So, yeah. not so shaky timeline. We're here. <coughs> oh, I see. Backup. I see, I see. Backup. Backup. Yeah, it's size. Okay. So, you're here. Your policy is up to here. You don't have this. You don't have this. You don't have this. You don't have this. And you want to go here. So you change your size. You add to your size this much. That's not even necessary if your database is down. But you know you, you don't want files to disappear just like that. And by default, they're mostly all just files. So for safety, you just change your size. So you increase your size by this much. Then you restore this, catalog, and you're done. So it's purely by size. There's no way to set this to 21 days and have it do the math by itself. You, you, yes, you can do this by time, too, but uh, it's more complicated. Well, it's not more complicated to set it, but there's more variables. Yeah, this is all explained <coughs> in the Arman guide for configure uh, retention policies. You can say configure. Is it retention? Yeah, configure retention policy. Yeah, configure retention policy 2.1 days. You can yeah. say this. Yeah. But then it's even more tricky. Here's here's how it works. Otherwise, when you do it by days. I can see how it would be less reliable because you can exceed your size and, you know. No, no, no. Um, the days is only when files are eligible for deletion. You can never exceed your size. Oh, so, so there's size still a setting still of size there as yeah. a setting. Yes. Okay. Even though you have days. Okay. Days will set you when files become eligible for deletion. So I should like have the time with this so the duration is on top of the, the size. So the, the duration flags it and then the size deletes it, so it's still aligned. Okay. And if your policy is backup. Redundancy two, two backups. It's up to here, right? Plus our archive redundancy for that period. Now, if you say window 21 days, <coughs> 21 days. Okay. Imagining this is every week, so every Sunday, 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 Sunday. Wow. Well, okay. 28 days. So every Sunday. So by saying 28 days, you say, I want to be able to <coughs> store at any point of time in the past 28 days. Okay? And if you say redundancy 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, it'll be the same thing pretty much. Right. Now, when backups start failing, that's when it becomes different. Imagine you didn't think this one, this one failed or you just skipped it. Okay? Now, uh, redundancy will get you here. Okay. But the moment you add one more backup or two more backups, one, two, three, four, then redundancy four will get you here. Day, 28 days, will still get you here. And as things become to slide, slide out, oh, there's a backup that didn't happen. Backup. 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 Imagine you took two there. And this one, you're starting to slide out. Your window says you need to be recoverable to here. To be recoverable, to be able to recover up here, you need this back. So this one will still not be obsoleted. Mm -hmm. Well, not obs well, obsoleted and this eligible condition. So your size will increase. Your size, the, 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 the size that you require to keep that amount of space yes. will, will increase. Now, your policy may be you know, way back here on how much you keep. 
This is just how much you want to guarantee to keep. What happens if your 28 days exceeds your 50 day limit, for example? Stop. Stop. So basically, if you don't use the time aspect, you still use the disk space aspect. You have the bail module for that. Yeah. For stalling? Yeah. Um, when you reach 85%, it'll start putting errors in your root lock file. 85 85%, I cannot find anything for deletion. 85%, I cannot find anything for deletion. And it will be Yeah. Okay. And daily is here. Well, I don't, I'm doesn't page, but daily is here. The bail doesn't page before the stall? Yeah. But daily is to see it. So we need a module. Oh, not necessary. We should have more than 15% of the We have the ability in the monitor alert log to look for strings. We could look for that. No. Like the ability is there, we just have to. It's, it's just a matter of how you want to set up. Because if you have 15%, you're not dead yet. That's what we said. No, I know, but we monitor archive log destination <laughs> on 15%. And we page, or 10% or 5%, and we page to make sure that we respond to it before the stall, right? Because mm -hmm. the stall is bad. The stall is down. Yeah. So, but if we set this up, that monitoring will no longer detect the stall before the downtime. So, in theory, we should be coming up with a new module to monitor that. Okay, you should. But it, again, it's only happening if you miss signs. Right, or there's a runaway process writing a lot of archive logs, which is the more realistic scenario. Because otherwise, the, this morning's daily would have caught it. You know, with the runaway process writing a lot of archive logs, that really happens. Yeah. And instead of the opportunity to kill that job <coughs> or, or respond to it before there's a downtime circumstance, we can be looking at downtime. So remember to use Armand to delete and maintain it. And that's it. Okay. Other questions? What do you mean most quiet? Where'd you I use it. Right. Right. Well, then you then that's a bit. Okay. Yannick is using it. He's being quiet. He doesn't say it sucks. Uh, if Yannick hasn't said it sucks, it's pretty good. Yeah. No one has said it sucks. Yeah. Good. All right. Cool. Okay. Okay. We're done. Good. Thank you, Crystal. Hey, no Thank you. Yeah, it's very the good. only thing I don't like about it is the fact that it doesn't know what's on tape and where on tape. And it doesn't know. Like, the well, if you don't have a normal module, you will not know anyway. Well, yeah, of course. Because so I do have one. If you do have one, then it'll know. Yeah. No, I'm using it like a telling it about it. You can put it in here with you. But as soon as it's 50 gigs, and it's always going to be 50 gigs full, as soon as there's 20% free on the disk, and none of the disk functions are ever going to catch it, because it's still 20% free on the disk.